Good morning, and welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Gary Lodeholt. As we wrap up this week of looking at titles we give to Jesus, today we begin with Star. You may never have heard of the story of Balaam, but it's right there in the Old Testament in the book of Numbers. The story happens as the Hebrews are finishing their years of wandering in the wilderness and moving up to enter the Promised Land. Often, as they moved closer, they would ask permission to cross the lands of the nations in their way. Some of the nations said yes, but others were afraid to let a large people such as this onto their land and risk them taking over from within. That was the case when they came to Moab. King Balak refused them passage, afraid of their size and power. And just to make sure, he sent for Balaam, a sorcerer of great renown, to come and put a curse on the Hebrew people. Balaam came, and twice he went up to do the king's bidding, but both times he uttered a blessing instead. On one of those occasions, he had a conversation with his donkey, and it's a big joke because Balaam, come to curse God's people, can't see what his donkey can about God and God's will. If you have heard of Balaam, that's probably the story you heard. The funny thing is that in the middle of all the sending, going, blessing, and cursing, Balaam offers four prophetic speeches, his mouth the vehicle for God's words. And in the fourth speech, in the last one, he says, I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star will come out. Of Jacob. Of course, he's talking about Jesus. Stars can compare, can compare to hardly anything we are familiar with. They're colossal in size, incomprehensible in their power and energy. Their light shines through the fathomless depths of space, the countless miles hardly dimming their brilliance. Their precision has allowed people to chart their way through pathless seas and guided untold travelers. We can even mark our time within milliseconds using stars. And much the same can be said for our star, Jesus. His power is without measure. His radiance and light penetrates to the very depths of our souls and reveal our need. He is the guide who leads us safely through our journey of life. And as for time, every moment of our lives should be given to him. Modern stars from Hollywood or from the world of athletic accomplishment seem to seek their fame for selfish ends. But Jesus is the star that shines for us, to light, to guide, to save. Like the hymn says, Shine, Jesus, shine. Teacher. What if Jesus had had all the resources our teachers have today? What if he had had projectors and multimedia computer presentation software and maps and charts and things like that? Would he have been a better teacher or reached more people if he'd had Zoom? Would we remember more of what he said? Somehow, I really don't think that it would have made much difference. Jesus had a way of communicating, of reaching out to the exact hunger and ache the people had deep inside them. And best of all, he taught them about life. He taught them about God. Teacher is one of the most common titles for Jesus in the Gospels. Often the Gospels say that Jesus taught the people. His words were so memorable that those around him remembered them and wrote down his wisdom for life years later. We have 30 or so parables, he told, which continue to offer us insight into God and into our faith. His words of teaching live on just as his salvation for us continues to be real and true. What does this mean for us? Well, I think it means we're supposed to be teachers too telling others of God and of God's love for us. Word. 
words. We so often wait for them with such anticipation and anxiety. Right now, we are anxious to hear our grandchild offer his first words. It's hard to wait. And do you remember, if you're a woman, how long you waited and anticipated that he would pop the question? And men, do you remember that moment as your life hung in the balance as you awaited her? Yes. Or maybe you remember someone's last words, the final I love you, or some other sentiment someone has said before they died. We live by words. They shape our lives, our understanding, even who we are. Is it any wonder then that in Genesis, when it was time for the creation to begin, that God spoke words saying, let there be light. And as the word went forth from God, it was done and it was good. Over and over throughout the Bible, God speaks and his word is done and his word for us is good. J. Robert Oppenheimer, the scientist instrumental in coordinating the effort to make the atomic bomb in World War II, once said, the best way to send an idea is to wrap it up in a person. God's idea was salvation. God's idea was love. His word was Jesus. It was done. It was done for us and it was good. Thanks for watching and remember to let this day belong to God.